Banaducci Live Coach. Danny Banaducci Live Coach. That is me, Danny Bonaducci, Life Coach. You should give me a call right now at 1-800-252-1025 or we will gladly take your email at lifecoach at kzok.com. Life Coach brought to you by Goldberg Jones, Divorce for Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE. I believe we will start with an email today. We will indeed. This comes from Donna in Edmonds. Donna in Edmonds. My mother is in her early 60s and seems to be showing signs of Alzheimer's. My father and I have mentioned our concerns to her, but she says we're just being paranoid and overly critical. She says her occasional mental lapses are just ordinary symptoms of aging. I worry it's something more. How can we convince her to get it checked out by a doctor? All right, well, I will tell you this. Uh, what is this young lady's name again? Donna. See, that was my early onset Alzheimer's <laughs> right there. You just said to me, Donna. Uh, here's the thing. Um, what I want you to do, um, first of all, if you haven't seen that may, uh, that movie, what's the movie with uh, Moore, the red-headed lady? With Julianne oh, Moore. Yeah. Still Alice. Still Alice, Alice thank you. Uh, you might want to take her to see that because it's like I could say um, my vision, which appears to be 2020 to me still, nothing has happened until I look down to read the fine print. And I, went, I can't read that. Like, that's my, my, it's early symptoms of aging. Yeah, but get glasses. There's all sorts of Alzheimer's tests, early onset Alzheimer's tests, things like that that you can do online you can go right there and you know what you can take them side by side so if she's saying uh, uh like taking a test with her husband it's not the same as taking it with you because you're younger and what she's doing is she's admitting to she's having memory lapses but it's due to it you know getting older in life which by the way she might be right about that so these alzheimer's tests will be a, a blessing for you too but if she's taking it with her husband or one of her friends you know and if she's getting smeared, if you will, uh, by somebody, then she might look into it. But that's what I would do first, get her to believe that this is not just old age or get you to believe, oh, maybe that is normal. Because you know what? If you go and see this movie, Still Alice, when it starts, uh, it, there's just no way for anybody to tell. It always looks like normal. It's always like this. Where the hell did I leave those keys? Now you say it one day, and it's, well, where'd your keys? Say so you all that all the time. And the next day, where the hell do I leave those keys? And it's early onset. It's different. It's a different reason for not remembering where the keys are. So go online, take some take some tests, and find out one way there's this normal aging process. Or does she have somebody, something to look at? And there's all sorts of medications and things to do now that there weren't 20 years ago. So it's a great idea for you to find out. So uh, go online and get one of the tests. And so while you're online and you get the, the result, hey, man, this is too much memory loss for a person in their early 60s. You need to see somebody. They'll have a recommendation of the people that she should see, and they should follow up on it either way. If you've got a question for the Life Coach, you call right now, 800-252-1025. Remember, you can lie about your name if you would like to stay anonymous. If you'd like to email, it's available 24-7, lifecoach at kzok.com. Chrissy in Seattle has sent an email. I'm lucky enough to have a job. The hours are 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. I drive 50 miles each way. In the morning, my commute is light, just 45 minutes. Uh, however, afterwards, it's one and a half to two hours. My employer wants to change my hours to 7.30 to 4.30. You'll be there all day. It's a nine-hour day and will automatically put me in the over two-hour range each way. Each way. The pay is really good, but the hours and the commute will not be. What do you think I should do? I think, I mean, this is important. I'm, I'm glad you uh, emailed us on this because I, I would check the value of your time on that and find out how much you're really being paid because I'll bet you if you put it down to and do those hours, because I'll go this far. and It's a rule I have in life. 20 minutes to and from work. 20 minutes to, 20 minutes away. If it's more than that, and give it a give it a half hour, that's fair. Now that other hour and a half that you could be in traffic, you need to uh, send your pay that way when you split it up, and you're not getting paid nearly what you think. Now, if you're thinking uh, it's just wasted, it doesn't it doesn't have to be. I don't like it. I wouldn't do it. I would never recommend that anybody does more than an hour, anywhere near an hour. Having said that. It's a perfect place to listen to books and a perfect way to learn a foreign language. I, I got the real uh, 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 rudimentary uh, grasp of Japanese in my car. So it's not a waste of time, but my money is against it. I don't think anybody should do it. I think it's my numbing time. Uh, so I would say get a better job before you quit that job. Always keep the job you've got, but it's nothing's worse that kind of commute. Uh, unless it's super voluntary. Um, friend of mine that used to work here, Bob Rivers, lives right next to Snoqualmie Casino. And I, I what the hell? Why do you do that to yourself? We had a little farm up there. He had vegetables. That was his choosing, and that was what he wanted to do. 
I would never recommend that to anybody. I'd say, keep your job while you search for a better job. And when you get one, remember, they don't even have to pay you as much for them to be paying you as much. Consider your time. 800-252-1025. That is the number to call with any kind of problem you have because Danny Bonaducci Life Coach can help you. Mandy, you're the next caller. Hey, Mandy. Hey, Danny. How are you today? Very well, thank you for asking. What's up? Hey, man, I got an almost 18-year-old son who I love very dearly, but he's calling me all sorts of horrendous names that I just can't handle. I have sleepless nights over this stuff, and I just don't know what to do with it anymore. I've tried to punish him. I've taken the keys away from the house once before. They had him, had him live at his friend's house. It's just not working out. I'm not sure what to do with him. Well, it sounds to me like you're you're on the right track, but the fact of the matter is this is going to be a legal adult. When does he turn 18? March 17th, my man. Like in, in 15 days? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll tell you, this is my opinion. That he's going to have called you his last name. You need to have this boy out of your house and where he goes. You know, you're responsible for his physical safety in a way. He's a grown man. He can go off to war. There's 18-year-olds all over the place serving their, their country and putting their lives at serious risk. He's he's an adult man. I would say, I will tell you. He's called your last name. When you, you say, I took away his keys. What happened when you took away his keys, Mandy? He ended up living in a park for a couple of days and then at a couple of friends' houses. But the uh, the overcaring parent I am, I ended up going and checking on him every damn day, you know, and making sure he went to school, which he had been doing, and he is now. So. And is, uh, he, is he going to graduate? He, not this year. He, was, he had to repeat a year. He's going to graduate next year, but he's right on track again. So, so he's going to graduate high school when he's 19? Yes, sir. Okay. That absolutely happens. Well, they said the normal age is 18. No big deal. Certainly no shame. But I don't like the foot this guy is starting off to. I think you need to, you know, when you say, I checked on him every day at the park, good for you as a mom, not good for you as a disciplinarian. Uh, are you physically afraid of this kid at all? Yeah, sometimes. I thought so. Because uh, wh why would you take that? You're such a beep, 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 beep. And stand How close does he stand to you when he says these things? In my face. In your face. I don't love it. Um, what I would suggest, and you know, I know you don't want to do this. I'm not going to say call the police ever when he, you don't think it's necessary. But when he's in your face calling you names, that's as close to assault as you ever want to get. I say shut this kid down. Let him go off to the park. And, you know, tough it out for set in your, in your schedule when I will break down and check on him. Because that he's up to no good. And what's going to happen is when he graduates uh, high school at 19 years old, he's not going to have a grasp on discipline at all. And think Things aren't going to go well for him. He's going to talk to one boss like that, and he's going to be out of a job. You need to step up. I say get take those keys away from him again. Let him have his meals and schedule appointments to come and go from your house. But having a grown man, a grown man, stand in your face and call your names. It's time for him to go and let let him choose the park if that's what he if that's what he wants to do. But the days of choosing to call your names are over. We've got time for more calls on Danny Bonaduce Life Coach eight hundred two five two one zero two five. I'm sorry horrible. that's happened to you. Charlie in Seattle, you're the next caller on Danny Bonaduce Life Coach. Hey, Charlie, what's up? Well, I've been married 27 years to a beautiful red-headed woman. Yeah? And I hope you know what that means. I do know exactly what that means, my brother. I was going to say why. Why did you pick that? But it's up to you. Okay, go on. Well, I'll answer that question. I'm colorblind. I told my wife, if I didn't know she's a redhead, we might not have gotten married. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? 27 years is a real nice run, no matter how this goes. What's happening now, Charlie? Well, you know, there's there's little to no action at my house. And uh, I try to explain to my beautiful red-headed wife that love is a culmination of a lot of things, right? Holding, touching, kissing, and yeah, even sex, right? Yeah. But my wife, you know, I call her the Victorian virgin. And, uh, <laughs> Maybe that's your problem. You call her that. Well, I, I get I get way stupider than that. You know, it's like Maximus is stupidus every once in a while. <laughs> okay. So I, I just, I try to break through the shell. And, uh, you know, I, I just, like I said, 27 years is a nice run, but you just, you'd think I'd have it figured out by now, but I don't. No, I would have never thought you'd have it figured out by now. I don't know anybody. That's, you're talking to a guy who's been married three times. If anybody's going to have figured it out, it would be me. And not a chance. I may be more ignorant than when I started. So let me ask you something there, Charlie. What is your exact question for me? Um, she is so, you know, insecure, sensitive about her physical being that 
um, it's just, you know, it makes it tough to, to penetrate. I don't, no, no pun intended, but, um, it's just, it's just a real hard dichotomy of... Well, wait a second, wait a second, man. Are you saying your wife is 400 pounds? No, no, she's like, she's like 10 pounds overweight, and she won't even let me go in the bathroom when she's in the shower, right? Yeah, that's that's more normal than you think. Girls put on they not only uh, 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 put on their face and their appearance in every guard, but they also put on their um, I don't know how they feel about things. Women like uh, we have a girl that works here named named Tori, and I'll bet without her makeup that she loves to put on. She's a beautiful young girl, by the way, but I'll bet without it, she's a hundred percent more insecure than she is with it. With with her makeup on, she is bold. Now I've never seen the girl without it, but I'm just guessing that she is not the same girl. Let your girl put her face on and everything like that. She's, you know what? She's about 10 pounds overweight and that that's in your world with today's models and things. That could still be just rail thin. Uh, I don't think you have the big problems that you think. I think you think you deserve all access. And that used to bother me. My wife, Amy, wants more privacy than I'm used to giving. Uh, a lot of doors closed that aren't usually closed in my relationships, and there are doors open for me that she's not used to seeing open and doesn't want to. The fact of the matter is, after 27 years, you have not figured out that your wife is her own person, and you're just going to have to let it go, man. You're going to have to say, okay, I should have washed up before she got in the shower, because now I don't get to. You know it's going to happen. It's going to happen every single day. Your wife showers every day. You know that's coming, and there's like five other things your wife does that bug you. That's not enough to make any changes, Charlie. You're the luckiest man in the world, and the only person that doesn't know it is you. Hang in here, Charlie. What about not uh, getting adult relations? Well, I, I wondered about that because because he, he he said it, but kind then he said it so briefly. It. Yeah. you know, I couldn't tell because I was going to recommend uh, 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 your the talk of filthy forecast, innovative men. That's that's kind of what they do. I shouldn't do their talking for them, but you know that's that's what I was going to do. And then all of a sudden he said her weight and things like that. I couldn't get what the problem was there. Um, so I, I can't I can't really address that one. But I will say this that. Uh, Give give in to what she needs you to give into, like going into the bathroom when she's in the shower and stop being to the point where she doesn't love me or she let me in. And you'll see, I think, so we'll open up in the bedroom. All right, we've got time for another call. Here's Anna in Tacoma. Hi, Anna. How are you? Hey, I didn't want to waste your time. I'm really sorry about that. I just wanted to know what program you used to learn Japanese in the car. Uh, I actually, I learned, I took this, not not the, the Rosetta Stone. I think it was, uh, is it Naturally Speaking? Uh, look up on the website if there's something called Japanese or all sorts of languages naturally speaking. And they were just repetitive things like uh, when I went to Japan, because I haven't spoken it in a long time, was doko yukuri hanashite kudasai. That means could you speak more slowly? So I remember all the we ones... We went out to eat a Japanese restaurant and you were talking to the sushi chef. So the way I learned it is Japanese naturally speaking. It's on the it's on the internet and you can find it and I highly recommend it. Anna. Thank you very much. Hey, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your phone calls. That was uh, Danny Bonaduce, Life Coach, and it was brought to you by Goldberg Jones Divorce and Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE.